seriously? Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another amazing lesson here at Seriously? English for Brazilians. My name's Josh Cashill, and I will be your guide through this magical and enchanted lesson about adjectives. And I don't think there is a more amazing topic than adjectives. We're going to talk about a specific kind of adjective, and I'm going to show you where it comes from, how you can make it, some of the, the mistakes that Brazilians tend to make, and how you can avoid those mistakes to improve your English. To begin, I'm going to show you from the verb how you derive these adjectives. And the verbs are the kings of the English language, and we must dethrone them. We must de-unpack them so you can see how we make these adjectives, how, where they come from. And when I show you this, you'll understand how they're used and how the mistakes from Portuguese to English come about and how you can obviously avoid them. And I'm going to show you through some very interesting and witty um, dramatic sequences, okay? So stay tuned and I'll be with you in just a moment. Now I know I've given a brief introduction, but I haven't really said what kind of adjectives we're going to look at. So I want to illustrate that by showing you, as I said, how we get the adjective from the verb. And the first verb that we're going to, well, the first, the verb that we're going to look at is an irregular verb because I want you to see the changes. I want you to see the different parts of it so you can recognize where the verb, or where these adjectives come from, okay? And the, the, the verb is the verb to know, all right? I know a man from Calcutta. And there's a whole other bit to that that I'm not sure what it is. So, but this is the infinitive with to. This tells you that it's a verb. So, as I said, we're going to take our adjectives from the verb, but let's break it down. That's the infinitive with to. The past simple is knew. I knew a man from Calcutta. I knew that story before you even told me. All right, that's the past tense, or the, past, the simple past, the past tense. So now let's look at the past participle. Known. Have you known that man from Calcutta all this time? Yes, I have known that man for many years. That's the past participle. That's what we use it. We use it in that kind of sentence structure. And then we get the present participle, which you should know is the ing form. It's also called the gerund. It's also called the progressive participle. You have this ing action going on. We use it with the present continuous. I am knowing something. Although we don't usually use the word to know in the present continuous, but it's okay. That's a different story. And when we look at the past participle, we don't see it here because it's an irregular verb. But with regular verbs, the past simple and the past participle look the same because they end with ed. That's why I wanted you to see an irregular verb to know that there is a change. And where do we get our adjectives from? We get them from here, the past participle, and the present participle. These are our two adjectives. And we're going to use adjectives to describe something. So let me get a different color here. How about a green? So let's say uh, it is a known fact. All right? We're talking about a fact. What kind of fact? It is a known fact. We're describing that particular fact. Um, and how about this? This is a cool example. A person looks at me in a way that says, I know what you're talking about. So that person gives me a knowing look. Like, ah, pertinho, I know, I know that you know, that I know that you know. So give me a knowing look. These are our two adjectives. One comes from 
the past participle, and one comes from the present participle. And the mistake that many Brazilians make is, which one do I use? And I'm going to show you in this first, uh, or this next example, what I'm talking about and where the, the mistake is sometimes made, okay? And we're going to see this in a dramatic scene that is made by me, animated by me, and commentated on and narrated by me, of course. So let's get to it. All right, as I said, an amazing dramatic scene taking place here. We have a dragon that has been, or some lizard that has been nuke, nuclearly modified and is now attacking the city of Rio de Janeiro. No! As he throws cars. Well, oh, let me draw something here, an important part of this narrative. We have the people, all right? We have this dragon and we have the people. All right, so to be serious now, let's get serious. We have this situation, right? We're going to describe the dragon and we're going to describe these people and how, how, how they're feeling. Well, let me use the Portuguese here. And the verb I want to use is, it's a tough word for me, aterrorizar, aterrorizar. And because, again, we're deriving our adjectives from the verb, let's describe this dragon in Portuguese. For me, this dragon, and actually for the people, the townsfolk, that is aterrorizante. Dragão aterrorizante. And these people, ah, the people who are running in fear, they are full of, we have the, the noun up here in English, it's terror. That's the noun. I'm going to cover over myself now. And uh, the verb aterrorizar is to terrify, to terrify. So now we have the people. In Portuguese, they are aterrorizadas. All right, this is important for you to see what's going on here. And so we can see where the mistakes may come from. Now, remember... When we were talking about our verb to know, we said the two adjectives came from the past participle and the present participle. Well, in this case, which one do we use? We're talking about the verb to terrify. What is the past participle? In the past participle we will use, I believe it was blue. So the past participle is this, terrified. It's a regular verb, so it ends in ed. And the present participle is terrifying, all right? And we have this ing. An important thing to remember when we're using these adjectives is in Portuguese, we have, look, let's look at this, this anche. That anche, that, that gives you an idea of, uh, of action, okay? And when we're looking at the story, the dragon is rampaging through the city, causing this terror. He's causing this terror, and he's spewing it out of his mouth, and these people are running away. They are full of this terror that this dragon is imposing on them. This dragon is the actor in this horrific drama, and he's causing all the terror. So he is a, describing him, he is a terrifying dragon. This ing right here, that gives you the action. It gives you something that, that, that relates to the actor of this scene, of the context. Okay? So, and then we're talking about the people. Well, what, what, how can we describe them? These people are terrified. Okay? And look at the similarities. Look at where the Portuguese goes and, and how the English goes with it. In Portuguese, we have anche, and that relates to the ing, the active form. And then we have adu here with adash, and look, we have the ed. We've got the d in both of those. So that's one way that we can use the Portuguese to help us find the correct answer in English. So we have the actor 
in this dramatic scene as the dragon. He's causing the terror, so he is terrifying. And the poor townsfolk who are receiving, who are on the receiving end of the terror, they are the passive recipients of the terror. They are terrified. And we have the ED past participle ending here. All right, that's just one example. I'm going to show you a couple more to really fix this idea. And again, we have the anti, ing, adu, ed ending from Portuguese to English. And that's something we can remember, okay? Okay, here <laughs> we have a situation that you might be familiar with. On the one side, we have the actor Ben Stein playing his classic role in the classic film, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which I think was translated so poorly into Portuguese. And that's another story. That's a beef I have with whoever is translating movie titles into Portuguese. I need to talk to you, okay? Because you're doing a really bad job. They're terrible. This movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, was translated as, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Curtindo a Vida Doidado, a Doidada. Something like that. Terrible! Whatever. Okay, I'm sorry. But anyway, if you've seen the movie, you know this teacher was like this. Bueller, Bueller, anybody? Bueller? Bueller? So, and the kids, you can see in this classroom, yeah, they look like they're really having a good time. So, let's take a look at the verb that we are going to use to describe the situation and the actors and receivers in the situation. And that is to bore. To bore means to entediar, okay? So, if we're going to describe the, the teacher and the class, you know, these, these kids in the class, we have to first find the past participle of the regular verb, Bored, that's the past participle, and the present participle is boring. Now remember, the actor is the ing. They're the ones that are, that are causing this boredom. And this teacher is just, uh, he's spewing out like the dragon. He's spewing out boredom. So in this case, he is the actor. So how can we describe him? Well, he is a boring teacher. He's a boring teacher, and he is. And a lot of people have suffered through, I hope I'm not boring. <laughs> I hope I'm not boring you. Uh, that would be a miserable thing for me to hear. Uh, but let me know if I am. And so if we have a boring teacher who is causing this boredom, then we have the class. We have these kids. How will we describe the kids? Well, they are bored. And that's the, the passive receptor of the boredom. And these kids look like they're bored to death. Literally, I think this boy here, I think he's dead. He's been bored to death. So here's a really easy example of seeing the actor and the receiver. And again, the action, the actor being the present participle. We have the presentness, the action going on. And then we have the past participle. We can kind of remember it passive, the receivers, past. Passive, receivers, bored, all right? Now we're going to take uh, one more look at another example, and uh, we'll kind of circle that, not circle that square, we'll draw this thing to a, a close, and uh, hopefully have solve all the problems we have with this for these adjectives, okay? One sec. Okay, here we have this beautiful, amazing fresco. And what scene is being depicted here? Look, the, uh, our, 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 our sight is drawn to the central figure who's talking there, who's, who's giving a dramatic speech to his onlookers. That is the great Greek orator Socrates and philosopher. And he's there in the middle, and all of these people around him, his audience, look at them. Look at how they, they are paying attention to, to what he has to say. So the verb that we're going to base our adjective on is to interest. Remember, we have the past participle 
interested. And we have the present participle, interesting, the ing. And I know you can't read it there, but it's that day. <laughs> Let me see if I can't move this down a little bit. Oh, I can't, whatever. Oh, well. So what do we have here? Let's take a look. Again, we have the actor, the principal, literally the main central actor in this, this scene. He would be described as a very interesting person. He has something very interesting to say. So we have here Socrates, here's our interesting guy, okay? He's the central actor and he's very interesting. And you can tell just how interesting he is by all of the other people around him. Look at this guy, for example. He's like, he was doing something else. He was, he was off talking to some woman over there, and all of a sudden, Socrates starts talking. He's like, ooh, what's this? I'm very interested. Interested. The past. I'm the passive guy. I'm receiving the interest. So I am interested. And this is one of my favorites. This guy right here, he's enthralled. He's more than interested. He's like, Ew, it's so interesting what you have to say. And he's just getting all goosebumpy from listening to what Socrates has to say. And remember, this is ancient Greece. They did things a little bit differently in ancient Greece. And another guy who's really interested is this gentleman here. Uh, if you follow his line of sight, he's looking, doo -doo 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 -doo. he's going somewhere way off, off topic, as you might say, from what Socrates has to say. But he's very interested nonetheless. So we're going to bring it to a close here, just remembering that the main rule, the main guideline is that when we're the actor, when we're describing the actor, we want to think of something in the progressing, something taking place. So we're going to use the active ing form, the present participle. And if we are describing something that is the receiver, that is the passive receiver, we're going to think of the past participle. And specifically when we're talking in problems with, from Portuguese, we have ah, o, o Socrates, ele é muito interessante. Again, we have the anti. That relates to the ing. And then we have, as pessoas estão interessadas. They are the passive receivers. They are interested. But a lot of times when it comes to the moment of actually speaking, Brazilians will mix those up. So it's good to think about it. The anche, ing. Adu, ed. Okay, that's a, a good guideline that you can follow. And um, I'll leave it at that. There's a, there's a funny joke that I wanted to tell you. I'm a terrible joke teller, so I'm not going to tell it now, but uh, maybe some other time about life in ancient Greece. But it's kind of, it's a dirty joke. I can't tell it here. So I'm going to leave you at that. I hope you were interested in this, uh, this video because I think it's a very interesting topic for you to learn. Okay? So I'm going to sign off now. Again, if you want to, if you feel, um, how can I say, uh, motivated enough, um, like, my, uh, like my video, subscribe, send me a comment if you are motivated, uh, and I encourage you to do that. And take a look at my, Facebook's, my Facebook page and go to my seriously-rio.com blog post to take a look at what we have there for you, okay? My name's Josh Cashel, and I'll see you next lesson. Cheers. Seriously?